It is beyond a doubt that all our knowledge begins with experience, Immanuel Kant. My friends, every day, 10 to 15 minutes, that is all we ask. Learn to trend follow. Great training for our subscribers. Fundamental analysis is fine, but don't be a dumb buyer. Please take that training. If you're not a subscriber, you can become one for free. Just go to chartingwealth.com and sign up. Let's jump into these charts. We see stocks are up. The S&P 500, 1.44%. Look at the NASDAQ 100, a booming up 2%. Bonds are down. Gold is down. Bitcoin is down. Let's jump into these charts. How do we see this week starting off? Starting off strong. Price percent oscillators trying to cross over on a Monday. Going up. And we'll continue to watch and see how these things go, but that's what it looks like on the weekly chart. The price percent oscillator trying to cross over. Derivative oscillator already gone green. Now things can change over the course of the week. The candle is not drawn until Friday at the close of the market. Price percent oscillator can always pull back through. The derivative oscillator can always go into the red, but right now that's what we see on Monday after the Easter holiday. Check out what we see happening with the price percent oscillator on the two-day chart. Of course, a crossover underway there. Also, we'll go ahead and rotate the arrow over on that, and we'll get things a move in there. And we see the derivative oscillators been gaining upward momentum for a while, switched over all the way back on the two-day candle ending that Wednesday, the 31st of March. And that price percent oscillator is flying over, going up. Typically, the two-day precedes, that is, it goes before the weekly vertical crossover, and that has occurred. We go to the half day. We can see where it crossed over, going up, actually back on the afternoon of Friday, the 26th. And of course, slid sideways a little bit for a, uh, by a couple of days, and then has been a boom. And since then, up in the morning, further up in the afternoon on Monday, things are a cranking. Why? Well, the government is just printing more money, or they're just really changing decimal points on a computer screen. And when you devalue the currency, you inflate the price of real things. That's what the stock market is supposed to represent. We go to the Qs. What do we see there? The Qs, of course, had a lot more downward pressure. Price percent oscillator not crossing over going up yet, but it has gone from flat to heading up, still negative. Derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. Big green candle forming. Look at the two-day chart. And, of course, it has swung over also. So we'll go ahead and note that. We'll go ahead and change our arrow there. Like we said, that two-day typically happens, uh, crosses over in the direction before the weekly turns. And we'll go ahead and redraw our trend line. We will do that too. Let's see, we can't really draw it on that new candle yet because it's just started uh, moving. So not much of a helpful trend line there. Let's make sure we do that over on our S&P chart also. And the chart that I'm using here, for those of you who don't know about TC2000, it's a paid version of freestockcharts.com. It's this easy to do those things online. Nothing magical or special I am doing here. It's just wonderful to use. Let's, uh, that's what we see happening on the two-day. Price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum. We can see things are flying up. We see on our half-day chart, of course, as things just, again, keep a booming, just moving right up strongly. That two-day, uh, half-day chart crossed over going up back on Wednesday, the 31st in the morning, and has just been a booming since then. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and redraw our half-day chart also on the S&P. Get everything up to date. There we go. But... That is where we are on stocks. They have just caught fire on Monday. We'll see if that continues through the rest of the week. And if we see this stock market, when we look at the weekly chart, we can see where the COVID crash occurred. Things popped up. 
and then rolled off some right there in September and then started moving up again and then of course blew things off those three big down weeks starting in late February and then sort of ran sideways and now look to be gaining some steam. But again, one day doesn't mean the market has changed forever. We'll continue to just watch and let these charts lead us. We'll see how the rest of this week moves when it comes to stocks. Let's go to bonds. Bonds down 0.44%. Now we look, we step back and we look at this big weekly chart. We can see bonds have been tanking for quite a while. They've been sliding sideways going into sort of the third week. This is the first red candle we've seen in two weeks. Now it's a solid red candle. The green candles were slowdowns in the down movement. They were solid also. Those of you know about our Heiken Ashi candlesticks, well, let me say this. If you don't know about them, I'm going to put that training at the end of today's show. Grabbing a pencil to write that down. I want you to check out our Heiken Ashi training. A couple hundred thousand people have taken that since we produced it. It's a really good one. Please understand how these work, but you can see the price percent oscillator is flat, maybe losing a little bit of that downward momentum. Derivative oscillator heading up slowly. We look at the two day, we can see where things have been sliding sideways. And again, so far, red spinning top. Even, and, and again, that's uh, almost a doji. After two prior days of up movement, price percent oscillator still heading up, derivative oscillator still heading up. So we'll see if we have a two-day recross anytime soon to allow us to get back into a down move. Let's look at the half-day chart. What is it doing? Well, let's move. We haven't changed this in a while. Let's get our half-day chart updated. Uh, we see how things were down in the morning. A little bit of recovery in the afternoon, so it didn't end up as far down as it could have. But like we said, bonds down 0.44% for the day on Monday. So we'll continue to watch and see. Typically, what do bonds do? They move conversely to stocks. If stocks are up, typically bonds are down. Well, stocks were booming today. Bonds weren't booming down, but they did go down some. We'll see if that down movement continues. We'll be watching throughout the course of this week for the potential of a weekly, uh, of a most likely a two-day recross going down unless there's enough movement to pull the weekly over going up. There hasn't been for a long time. We look back and we can see how bonds have been going down, leveling like we're seeing right now, and then going down again, leveling off, and then going down again. That might be what bonds are getting to do, or maybe they're finding a bottom. Look at where things are. We talked about this, the 200 period moving average bonds are hanging right there. Is that going to be a floor, and are bonds going to turn around? We don't know. We'll wait. We'll see. We'll let these charts lead us. Let's look at gold down just a little bit for the day, 0.04%. What gold's really doing, sliding sideways, price percent oscillator sliding sideways, derivative oscillator losing a little downward momentum. Two-day chart, crossed over in gold back on Friday the 19th, and of course sideways, then dropped a little bit, gained a little bit, hanging right there below, you know, hitting up right on that 200 period moving average line. So we'll watch gold, see where it goes. Derivative oscillators positive, price percent oscillator. This is the two day chart, first day of this latest two day candle. So we'll continue to watch and see how it goes. Half day chart, and we'll find that half day trend line. Bring that over here and we'll get that going in the right direction for us. There we go. And again, heading up. So we'll wait to see how gold is going to settle out. Is it going to bottom out and move up, or is it going to rotate back over and head down some more? We don't have a definitive answer on that yet, so we'll wait, watch, and see, and let these charts lead us. Big point of the day, though, is the way stocks are a booming up. Still waiting to see if gold and 20-year bonds are going to continue their down movement or settle out and start moving up. Let's see how the rest of the week shapes up.
particularly with the stock market and how gold and bonds follow. Lastly, we go to Bitcoin. What's Bitcoin up to? Down for the day, 0.14%. What do we see when we look at our price percent oscillator? Still oscillating down, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Bitcoin just sort of, you know, moving up. We saw some big up movement, of course, since we saw that weekly vertical crossover all the way back on the 23rd of October of last year. And it boomed up and then just sort of started sliding sideways. We look at the high right around the $60,000 mark. When did it first hit that? Actually, back in mid-March. And it's just sort of hanging there. What that hanging there is doing is devolving our price percent oscillator and our derivative oscillator on that weekly chart. We want to see that strong to show us you know, strong up movement when Bitcoin recovers again and starts to move up. Two-day chart is still heading down a little bit itself. Derivative oscillator still negative, price percent oscillator negative. Price is just trying to, again, gain a little bit of momentum and start moving up, but we're just not seeing that with our indicators. Remember, the price percent oscillator is a percentage version of the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence indicator. And the derivative oscillator is a triple smooth version of the relative strength index. Price percent oscillator is a lagging indicator. Derivative oscillator is a leading indicator. And we're waiting though for those to give us an indication of continued up movement. We look at the half day chart and we can just sort of see where Bitcoin has peaked and it's just sort of slowing down, devolving with that price percent oscillator, losing momentum, uh, yes, losing momentum and flattening the derivative oscillator, losing momentum, heading down. So we'll continue to wait, wait, watch and see with Bitcoin. Of course, what does Bitcoin tend to do? It tends to move in very big patterns when it takes off. And at this point, it perhaps is in a consolidation phase, perhaps trying to gain some energy and start popping up again. We want to see that price percent oscillator and uh, two-day, both on the weekly and the two-day, rotate over going up to see another one of these highfalutin patterns where Bitcoin just takes off. But that's where we are. Hopefully you're doing your practice trading, learning these things every day, 10 to 15 minutes. That's all we ask. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.